Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today I've created the ultimate setup guide for your Pal Kitty RGB30. Like all my setup guides, I'll leave links in the description to anything I talk about as well as having timestamps so you can just jump to whatever spot that you need. However, as usual, highly suggest that you watch from the beginning to avoid missing anything. We're going to be installing ArcOS in this guide which is a custom firmware available for the RGB30. I personally think ArcOS is a much better operating system to run than what's sent with the device, and it has great community support. As always, before we start, you need to have a branded quality SD card and SD card reader. For a quality SD card and SD card reader, it depends on if you want to do a one SD card setup or two. If you just want one SD card, the Samsung EVO 128 gig is the best option. Or if you're doing a two SD card setup, that same card for ROMs and a 32 gigabyte SanDisk is a great combination. One or two SD cards is personal preference. If you're price conscious, just stick with the one. Now, the last thing you need is your ROM and BIOS library. If you just want a big list of games and then you can curate them yourself after if you'd like, you can download a ROM pack called the Tiny Best Set. This set comes with a big curated list of ROMs and BIOS files. To make things easy, with a 128 gig card, you want to download the files that I'm showing on screen. We can get the artwork through scraping in ArcOS itself, so don't worry too much about that. You can extract all those zips to the same place, and you should have a few folders with BIOS and a bunch of ROM folders. If you want more platforms that aren't available in this package, it'll be on you to source them yourself through Google, Reddit, or other means. I'll again leave a link in the description to a video where I talk about that. Part of ROMs would be Pico 8 ROMs, and these cost 15 US dollars if you want them. Let me show you how to get these, and I'll show you again later how to add them. Head to the Pico 8 website, which is lexalawful.com slash pico-8.php, and then click the download button. Click Get Pico 8. Now you just need to check out, so enter your email, use PayPal, Amazon, or your credit card, and continue that process. You'll get an email that says your Pico 8 order is ready. Click the link and it'll come to a page where you can download your items. Click the Linux tab and then the Raspy button and it should download the zip of what you need. Those are the files we need to get Pico 8 up and running. For the actual games, like the Tiny Best set, there's a collection called Pico Awesome and we can get it through Reddit. Just click the download link and we're all set for right now. So you have your SD card or cards, SD card reader, and your ROM and BIOS files ready to go. Let's move on. As far as software goes, the two things we need are Rufus and 7-Zip. Head to the Rufus website and download the portable Rufus tool. This is going to help us format our SD card as FAT32, especially if your card is above 32 gigabytes. But just use Rufus to avoid issues. Head to the 7-Zip website and download the EXE that matches your Windows version, so likely the 64-bit. Let's also head to the ArcOS wiki and we're going to grab the RGB30 image. Download it from G Drive or Megalink and after you've downloaded it, use 7-Zip to extract the zip. Don't forget to extract it, it's the image file inside that we need. Connect your SD card to the PC using the SD card reader. For the people doing two cards, this is going to be for the operating system card. Open up Rufus and make sure the device listed is the SD card that you connected, it should match the drive size. On the right, click select and navigate to the folder you extracted from the ArcOS zip and select the image file. Leave everything else as default and click start. Click yes to any pop-ups. 
Go check on some loved ones. This will take some time. From here on out, after the image is put on the SD card, you're going to get pop-ups in Windows that say the SD card isn't formatted, or errors with partitions, or other things. Ignore all of that. If you format the card after all of this, you're going to need to redo everything all over again. It's just Windows not knowing how to handle a FAT32 card. Once Rufus is done, you can safely eject the card using the taskbar, and then you want to put it into the slot labeled TFOS in your device, and make sure it's powered off. Then power on the device. It's going to reboot twice, don't touch anything, and just let it do its thing. When you see the emulation station menu, that's when you know you're good and ready. Push start, go to quit, and shut down system. Now we need to get our ROMs and BIOS files on here. This next step depends on if you're doing the one card method or two card method. One card method can skip this next part, as I'm going to show how to get a second card working, and you can just go to the next timestamp. Connect your second SD card to your PC using the SD card reader. Open up Rufus and make sure the device listed is the SD card that you connected. Again, it should match the drive size. Now, under boot selection, change it to non-bootable. Then, checking near the bottom, make sure the file system is FAT32 or large FAT32. Click start and you might get some warnings about partitions or data. Just go ahead and click yes to all of them and get started. It should be quick and it'll format your second SD card as FAT32. When it's done, safely eject it and insert that card into the slot TF game in your device. And make sure the OS card is in the TFOS slot as well. And make sure the device has been powered off. Turn the device on, and when you get to the menu, head to the Options tab, then Advanced, then click Switch to SD2 for ROMs. When that's done, we're all set and the folder structures have been set up for the second SD card. Push Start, go to Quit, and shut down System. Okay, for single and dual card users, connect your SD card back to the PC. If you're doing the single card method, you should see an easy ROMs partition in File Explorer, so head into that. Otherwise, if you're doing the two SD card method, you'll just see ROM folders and it'll be whatever you labeled in Rufus before. If you don't see anything, open up Disk Management and assign that partition a letter. It should be pretty self-explanatory at this point, but these are all the platform folders where you can put your ROMs in, as well as a BIOS folder. What you want to do now is grab your ROMs and BIOS files from the tiny best set collection we grabbed earlier and put them in the right folder. The folder names likely don't match for a lot of them, so you'll have to just copy the ROM files inside and put them in the right folder on the SD card. If you get stuck and you're not sure what platform is what, check the ArcOS Wiki's emulator page and it'll show you, as well as the right file types and BIOS needed for each platform. For those that wanted Pico 8, extract the zip we downloaded earlier and you'll want to grab the three files labeled Pico 8, Pico 8 underscore DYN, and Pico 8 dot dat. Then you want to move those to the Pico 8 ROMs folder on your SD card. Now head back and extract the Pico Awesome zip and then grab everything inside the Pico Awesome Pico 8 folder.
and put it all inside the carts folder. And that's right inside the Pico 8 ROMs folder on your SD card. If it asks to replace any files, go ahead and do so. Once you've moved all that over, safely eject and put all of your cards back in the powered off device. So both cards if you're doing the two card method, or the single card if you're doing one. Turn on the device and you should see all your games set up and ready to go. Let's get some artwork on here though. Turn on your Wi-Fi in the options. Once you're done setting up your Wi-Fi, back out to the main emulation station menu and push start. Head down to scraper and I don't want or need readings or videos, so I'm going to turn that off. If you want actual box art, choose box 2D for image source. When you're ready, click scrape now and then you can customize which systems you want to scrape or just do the whole thing. Another thing to show, and that's enabling retro achievements. For those unfamiliar, you can get achievements in retro games, which is awesome, and we want that feature. If you don't have an account already, head to the Retro Achievements website and make one, as you're going to need your username and password. On the device, go to RetroArch from the main menu, and you'll see two RetroArch instances. We're going to have to log in on both. Steps are the same. Open one, then head to settings, achievements, enable achievements, and then enter your username and password in each field. After that, back out to the main RetroArch menu and go into configuration, then save configuration. Then quit RetroArch. Repeat these same steps again for RetroArch 32. Speaking of RetroArch, there's a few settings that aren't on that should be, in my opinion. First, fast forward isn't mapped for some reason. So let's head into settings, input, hotkeys, and let's select fast forward toggle and make it R2. Let's also scroll down and we'll set show FPS to Y. This makes it so we push select plus these hotkeys to turn these functions on since select is our hotkey button. Back out one menu and let's turn off confirm quit, so you don't have to do start plus select twice to exit a game. Now let's back out again and jump into saving. Right now ArcOS is not saving state on exit, so if you want that, enable auto save state. In the same way, when you load a game, it's not loading the save state automatically, so enable that if you want that too. Personally, I want both. Back out twice to get to the main RetroArch menu, and then Configuration, Save Current Configuration. Quit RetroArch and then repeat all of these same steps again for the other RetroArch version. If you want to change your theme, from the main menu in ArcOS, press Start, then UI Settings, and you'll see a few themes here. If you want to add more, head to the ArcOS Wiki, and you'll see instructions on how to do so. For those that want to play other types of games, we also have something called Portmaster. This is a bit more involved and would bloat this video a bit, but if you're interested in games that you can port over, check out Retro Game Core's guide on it. I just have Stardew Valley loaded currently. If you want to load your games remotely, head to Options and enable Remote Services. Then in any local network browser, Type that IP address in. Default username and password is lowercase arc for both. Now you're able to upload, download, remove, and do whatever you want to the files on the ROM card. It's super useful for just adding games remotely to your device. Lastly, the last thing you should do is update ArcOS, and it's very easy. You go to Options and then scroll down to Update. Click it and it'll give you a warning about not stopping the script. Click OK and then you have to write OK. Then set it down and let it update. Once that's all done, just jump into some games and have some fun. For normal usage, that's all you need to do and that was the main point of the guide. 
just wanted to get you up and running, and now the world is your oyster. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow, and hope you all have a good one.